Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Canadian World Webinar number six on the topic Certified Vote from Sustainably Managed Forests. And thank you for taking time out to know more about certification and sustainability. Canadian Wood, officially known as FII, is a not for profit crown agency of the government of British Columbia, the westernmost province of Canada with a mandate to promote BC forest sports in the offshore markets. We have been operating in India since 2013-14, creating awareness and spreading education about certified wood from Canada. Apart from education on the BC wood species and the lumber grades, we also assist in introducing and connecting interested Indian manufacturers and timber traders with lumber companies in BC Canada. A highly skilled tech commercial FII team also engages with the stakeholders and provides hand-holding and technical support. In today's webinar, we have our director market development, Ms. Nirla Thomas, making presentation on the webinar title, followed by a presentation on business case for chain of custody certification by our guest speaker, Mr. Arun Kumar Russell of NCCF, the Network for Certification and Conservation of Forests, and the fear of PEFC in India. PEFC, as we all know, only is known as a program for endorsement of forest certification, is an international non-profit government organization which promotes sustainable forest management through independent third-party certification. It is considered the certification system of choice for forests around the globe. PMC was founded in 1999 with headquarters located at Geneva and Switzerland. Both the aforementioned presentations will be approximately 20 minutes. And I am sure you will find them highly informative and useful. After the presentations, we will have approximately 20 minutes QA session. So I encourage you to please keep typing in your queries when the presentations are on, and our panelists will try and answer as many, as many questions as possible. Queries that remain unanswered, we will be addressing them through email within 48 hours of the end of the webinar. I am sure you are as eager as I am to see their presentations, hence we'll now invite our Director of Market Development, Ms. Nirmala Thomas, to deliver her presentation. Over to you, Nirmala. Thank you, Pranesh. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Just allow me to screen share, please. Yeah. Is it clear? No. Yeah. Thank you, Pranesh. Um, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, welcome to this webinar on certified wood from sustainably managed forests. My name is Nirmala Thomas, and I'm the Director of Market Development. Uh, all of you must be aware um, that we are also known as Canadian Wood in India. We have three offices in India, as seen in the picture above, is the Canadian Wood head office in Mumbai, which houses an office and a display center. We have two other satellite offices. Uh, kindly let me know, is it working? Fine. Yeah, so sorry, there's some issue out here with the lag. Um, we are a non-profit organization with a mandate to educate and promote use of wood or lumber coming from British Columbia. My presentation today will highlight the need to use certified wood from sustainably managed forests. We truly believe wood is a sustainable material and we recommend the use of wood. In fact, any wood, as long as it is from certified and sustainably managed forests of the world. Um, as visible in the picture here, um, Canada is known to be a nation of forests. As visible on the map, it is said that Canada has 10% of the world's forest cover. These forests are mature, productive, and thriving. Canada conserves and protects its forests through implementation of strict laws and science-based sustainable forest management practices. Canada's forests are very important to Canada as well as to the planet itself. 
Canada is almost. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt you there, but the, your slides are not moving, so we're see, we're stuck on the uh, title page at the moment. Can you see that? I'm sorry. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. One minute. Uh, is it better now? Well, we're on the title page. I think uh, others would agree. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Yep. Now it's moved. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so Canada is known to be a nation of forests. As visible on the map, it has 10% of the world's forest cover. These forests are mature, productive, and thriving forests. Canada believes in conserving and protecting its forests through implementation of strict laws and science-based sustainable forage, forest management practices. Canada's forests are important to Canada as well as to the planet itself. Canada has almost 0% deforestation over the last 20 years. Sophisticated tools and techniques used by the Canadian forest scientists report on the country's vast forest reserves. About 94% of Canada's forests are publicly owned. This enables the government to regulate harvesting practices and plan use of land through legislation and policies. So why would uh, wood is considered as a natural resource like any other natural resource available around the world, example, gas and oil. Canada's forests are central to the country's natural environment, history, culture and economy. The softwood lumber industry is an important sector in the Canadian economy. Um, Canada's modern and efficient lumber companies have the potential to serve markets at home and around the world. Because of this, the Canadian government continues to invest in research and development projects that support expanded use of wood in everything from innovative construction materials to biofuels. So why are forest certifications so important to the world? Deforestation is a serious issue the world over, impacting climate change and destroying biodiversity. There exists a need to control and manage extraction of wood for commercial use. If we want to preserve our global forests, it is our responsibility as consumers to make sure they come from a sustainable and responsible source. Today, illegal logging has become a serious threat to forests globally. Certification is only possible if forests are allowed to be assessed and the wood harvesting companies who we call as forest owners or managers uh, allow assessment of their forest land and practices, leading availability to legal and a sustainable raw material. Forest certification offer different benefits for different groups. Forest certifications can show certification uh, basically for responsible producers of wood, consumers who are actually buying this raw material can show certification in their journey down the road when they uh, create products by labeling them. The public as a responsible customer can look to the value of certification by becoming a responsible citizen of the planet. So how does certification work? The forest manager or owner needs to have the forest audited. This makes the wood sourced by you from these forests as certified wood. Why for a manufacturer producing products using the certified wood will be proven through the chain of custody certification. More details on the same will be provided by Mr. Arun Kumar in his presentation, followed by mine. Canada's forests are certified by global forest programs like PFC, FSE and SFI that meet rigorous standards. Although the forest certification systems differ from one another, all three are based on standards that reflect the current understanding of what sustainable forest management entails. Canadian wood can provide you with necessary documentation for all lumber sourced from British Columbia in Canada. Um, let me show you on graph. Uh, if you can have a look at the graph shown on screen, where does Canada stand on the global map with regards to certifications? As you can see, Canada is number one in terms of area of forest certified, followed second by Russia, and third, none other than British Columbia, a province in Canada, or what we call as a state in India. 
This data is um, documented around December 2018 and can be found on our website. So where does British Columbia fit into this whole thing of sustainability? As seen on screen, uh, the dark green portion on the map is British Columbia, the westernmost province of Canada. 40% of Canada's forests are located here. World-renowned lumber companies such as Best Fraser, Canfo, Tolco, and Interfo are all located in British Columbia. British Columbia is a trusted supplier of legal forest products from sustainable sources. Some more key statistics on the forest uh, shown here on screen are uh, as available on the government website. The outer light green area represents the total BC area land of 95 million hectares, while the inner slightly darker area represents the forested land of 55 million hectares while the inner darker portion is actually the land available to these forest companies for harvesting, which is around 22 million hectares. Finally, the red dot is actually the true indicator of the amount of land that is harvested, which is around 200,000 hectares annually. So what is sustainable forest management? Why trees are harvested? New seedlings are being planted in nurseries that every harvesting company is responsible to maintain. As you can see from the picture here, these nurseries are one of the many nurseries that a harvesting company has to maintain as per sustainable management practices. Your seedlings are nurtured, allowed to grow as shown in the man, uh, shown in the picture of the man holding the uh, small seedlings. They are allowed to grow till the age of six to seven years. So the theory is for every tree that gets cut in Canada, three new saplings are planted. This is to ensure in case, even if two saplings don't last or die, at least one survives making this almost 0% deforestation over a period of time. These saplings, as visible in the previous slide, which were nurtured in nurseries, are then planted back into the area where they were harvested from. This is a common exercise carried out by students during summer to earn money as well as learn more about nature. This allows the biodiversity to be maintained along with regrowing of trees. The entire ecosystem is managed so that there is no disturbance to wildlife. It would be very easy for, for them to cut trees in one place and plant the seedlings in another place. But this is not the definition of reforestation. You need to plant trees from where they are cut, allowing it to be reforested. While Sometimes in some countries, trees are cut from one place and planted in another, which is called as replanting of trees. Everybody knows forests are constantly changing. Keeping track of forest change and recovery is a fundamental part of Canada's commitment to sustainable forest management. There will always be natural disturbances such as fire, insect infestations. All these are part of the forest life cycles. So it is a well-known fact that natural forest fires often stimulate new growth unless the fire has been created or is man-made. Insects reduce aging of trees and make the forest more productive. Diseases in trees eliminate weak trees, giving new species a chance to thrive. Deforestation only occurs when man permanently removes the forest to make way for commercial land. I think this picture is a wonderful picture to show forests are renewable. As seen from the picture on screen, if you look at the top left corner of the image, the area where there is a clean patch of land, this is where harvesting has recently taken place. Only mature trees have been harvested from that area. If you look to the left, or sorry, to the right corner of the image, you can see seedlings that were planted have slowly grown into smaller trees. And this old harvested land will soon be a full fledged forest again. We call this reforestation and not replanting of trees. It is a known fact that 
you actually will go back to the area, the cleaner area of land where you currently, it is showing as a clean patch. You will only go back to that land probably 100 or 120 years from now because the young trees would have matured into larger trees, again, ready for harvesting. So what is the, uh, what is sustainable forestry carbon cycle? Whenever we say wood, wood comes from forest. So typically timber is associated with deforestation. That's a thought that crosses everyone's mind. But so is man-made material like cement and steel. They leave back a huge carbon footprint. These materials like carbon, uh, sorry, uh, cement and steel require massive amounts of energy and water to produce, emitting carbon dioxide that contributes to climate change. Wood, in turn, grows in its natural surroundings with sun as its energy and rain as its source of water. It acts as a carbon sink and continues to absorb carbon as they grow. So when trees are mature, it is time to harvest them so that the carbon locked in the trees is cut down and stored in the form of wood, furniture, paper, etc., or can be also used as biofuels. If you do not harvest the old trees, these trees die and in return release the carbon back to air. This is something which has been taken notice of and this, is, this sustainable forestry creates an endless cycle of carbon absorption and storage, making wood as one of the most sustainable resources in the world. Another important point to note is that India, even though it loves wood and is a wood loving country, is fiber deficient. India continues to import wood to augment its local supply. Currently, wood is imported from different parts of the world to feed this demand supply gap in India. It is here that we would like to stress that Canada can be a reliable source of supply for sustainable, certified and versatile wood. As seen in the infographics on your screen, um, research has been conducted, in fact, in Canada and elsewhere in the world, where it shows that one container of wood captures around 32,000 kilos of carbon from the air and locks it into the wood itself. When you transport one container of wood, of course, you tend to burn some, you actually give out some carbon by producing and shipping wooden, uh, wooden crates, which amounts to tentatively around 15,000 kilograms of carbon. But in spite of the transportation, you still help Earth save from 17,000 kilograms of carbon which stays locked in the wood. This calculation would apply to all imported wood, irrespective from where they come from, plus minus the location they are being sourced. Few places on earth can truly match the diversity of Canada's vast forest reserves. Um, as seen in the picture about um, you, basically these are species of lumber that are available from British Columbia in Canada. The first three set of uh, species that are visible, Western hemlock, spruce fine fir, and Douglas fir, these are ideal for producing furniture, door, and door frames. SPF, in fact, is known as the material for building houses or the wood for building houses, as they generally do in North America. All SPF from British Columbia and Canada comes stress rated, and this is something we advocate for building with wood. The last two species visible, yellow cedar and western red cedar, are ideal for using in outdoor applications that have natural properties uh, which show resistance to termite, rot, and decay. So the question arises is why use Canadian wood? You can use Canadian wood because it is available, first of all, as sawn and finished lumber. It is skin dried and it is ready to use. And most importantly, it is certified. Wood is an environment-friendly material, healthy and versatile. We as responsible citizens should ensure that when we look at raw materials, we should look at them as sustainable materials, ensuring that these are available for future generations to come. You can use Canadian wood or any other wood, but wood, use wood which comes from certified forests. You can use wood, whether let it be creativity in Canada, 
as seen from the picture above, or you can use it creatively in a pub as seen in um, the picture above. This, uh, this venue is Palette Pub in Bengaluru, which has used SPF uh, in, as lumber crates in its interior decoration. You could also use it in interiors in Canada, and you could also unit, uh, use it as furniture and doors in India. All these visuals shown here are true uh, pictures currently being used as products in people's houses. You could use it in a ceiling in a university in Canada, or you could use it as a glue lamp structure or interiors in a university in Ahmedabad. These are all live pictures of projects uh, which house Canadian wood. You could use it outdoors in Canada as a post and beam structure or as a pergola, or you could use it in an outdoor um, residence in Himachal. This is a private residence villa uh, made by a very famous architect in India. The post and beam structures are made out of Douglas fir. You could use it as a structural material in Canada, or you could use it as a structural material in India too. This is a, a wood frame construction house uh, currently standing in Pyramid Timbers uh, factory premises in Mysuru. Some of, uh, just sharing with you, if you had the chance to visit India Wood 2020 held in Bangalore just before COVID um, came into existence, you would have the chance to view the ABBA houses which have been displayed on screen. On your left is a wood frame construction house, uh, while on the right is a double TNG wood house, all made with Canadian wood. These were prefabricated in factory and constructed on site over a period of five days of the exhibition. This is the beauty of building with wood. Uh, on, on the screen, you can see um, if you need any more information on Canadian wood species or any project related queries, please do not hesitate to reach out to our team. Their names have been mentioned. So we have an office in North, which is located in Gurugram. We have Ram, uh, Rambir, uh, our business development manager, and Sanjeev Krishna handling projects. Uh, in South, we have an office uh, in, yeah, next to World, in World Trade Center. We have Ritesh Kumar and Jimmy Thomas as our business development managers uh, responsible for the region of South. And in West, we have Gajanan uh, responsible for business development and Harshad uh, for projects. So please do not hesitate to contact any of us or visit our website, canadianwood.in. Before I hand over to uh, the next presenter, Mr. Arun Kumar Bansal from NCCF PFC, uh, let me just play you a small video which captures all that what has been said till now. Uh, if you could kindly allow me just a second. Yeah. There are few places on earth that can match the diversity and richness of Canada's forests. Forests are an important part of Canada's natural ecosystem and central to its economy, making up just under half of its landscape with eight major forest regions and a vast diversity of wood species. From planting a seedling to manufacturing lumber, the forest sector in British Columbia and Canada is an interconnected industry of forest management and wood processing. This includes planting, tree harvesting with modern, high-tech machinery, and sophisticated wood product manufacturing. The entire cycle is planned around responsible resource management. In British Columbia, forestry and wood product manufacturing are a fabric of our culture, our communities, and our people. Our forests provide a sustainable supply of wood for lumber and mass timber products, while protecting our environmental and social values of wildlife, water, community, economic interests, and First Nations peoples. British Columbia is a global leader in sustainable forest management. Forestry practices in British Columbia ensure that environmental, social, and economic needs are met for current and future generations. This matters to our customers and sets us apart from other supply regions globally. Wood products from British Columbia come from legal, sustainably managed forests. By law, Less than 1% of the forests are harvested annually, with three trees planted for every single tree harvested. This commitment to forest regeneration results in 200 million new seedlings planted every year, ensuring replenished forests for the future. 
Canadian wood suppliers provide certified products under the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC, and the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification, PEFC. These strict international certification standards add additional assurance of the global protection of forest resources and make Canada a reliable and sustainable provider of wood products. State-of-the-art technology and machinery incorporated in our forestry practices and through our highly productive, efficient sawmills support the production of Canada's quality lumber. After harvesting, logs are transported to sawmills for manufacturing. At the sawmill, the logs are cut to target lengths and loaded into a debarking machine to remove the bark. Next, logs are processed through primary breakdown equipment like head rigs and chip and saws and are turned into lumber. The lumber is then sawed to specific widths and trimmed to specific lengths as it passes through secondary equipment like edgers and trimmers. A scanner will show if the lumber requires any further trimming. Next, the lumber is sorted by thickness, width, length, and sometimes by grade attribute. It is stacked, which may include stacking on sticks for kiln drying. When the lumber is dry, it is ready for final processing. Some lumber goes through a planer mill to be made smooth. Whether planed or rough, the lumber is then graded and trimmed. It is sorted by size and by grade, then finally packaged for shipment. This results in the most efficient yield of the best quality lumber. Once the lumber is packaged and prepared for shipment, it is loaded onto a network of trucks and rail cars for delivery to shipping ports for distribution around the world. Independent studies confirm that the CO2 stored in wood products far outweighs any extra CO2 generated by the efficient manufacturing and shipping of Canadian lumber around the world. Lumber produced from British Columbia and Canada is durable, strong, and versatile. Superior working properties offer design flexibility and durability. Canadian lumber products can be bent, shaped, or assembled as required, making it ideal for countless indoor, outdoor, and structural applications such as windows, doors, gazebos, and furniture like tables and chairs. Canadian wood species are also easy to face laminate, edge glue and or finger joint, and standard sizes and grades ensure that the same high-quality product reaches the client each time. Canadian wood products bring warmth and natural beauty to an interior and exterior application or furniture product. It can be sanded to create a smooth surface, has a superior coating adherence, and can easily take any stain or finish. Across Canada and North America, wood products are influencing design and construction, not only for interior and exterior applications, but also the construction of buildings. Mass timber products are changing the way buildings are constructed, allowing for immense spans and taller buildings made of wood. Canadian wood products are being used in a wide range of buildings and products, showcasing the versatility, strength, and durability of lumber from Canadian forests. That is why using Canadian wood is a natural choice. Thank, thank you for watching, taking time out to watch. I would now like to invite Mr. Arun Kumar Bansal to come over and uh, start his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Nirmala ji, for inviting NCCF, a member of PFC Alliance, to contribute in this important webinar organized by Canadian Wood and for an excellent presentation on the basics of forestry in general and forestry in British Columbia in particular. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, yes. Uh, and the hard description of forest in British Columbia took my memories back to more than 30 years when I visited several forest, stay, forest areas in British Columbia during my stay at UBC from 1986 to 1988. Uh, the, the concept of forest attrition was not born at that time. In my short presentation, I will try to describe chain of custody certification and the wood product based business opportunities from Indian perspective. I along with my colleagues Varun from NCCF and Ms. Taruna Singh from GIPL, a notified certification body, will try to respond to your queries at the end of the presentation. Allow me to share my screen. Is, uh, are you able to see my screen? 
Yes, visible. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Now, NCCF is uh, was established in 19 uh, in 2015 is a professional network of experts and uh, experts and forest sector stakeholders encompassing uh, development of India specific sustainability standards. Our core working areas are of course uh, development of sustainability standards for natural resources, then policy, policy advocacy relating to natural resource conservation and management through multi-stakeholder engagement and capacity building of various stakeholders in the process. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, NCCF is a member of uh, uh, PFC Alliance, that is Program for Endorsement of Forest Certification. It is a member of IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, and it has got observation st observer status with UNCCD, United Nations Convention on Combating Desertification as a civil society organization. NCCF uh, in the sustainability standards, we have already developed a standard for forest management which was launched and endorsed by PFC in 2019. Tree outside forest section is uh, ready for launch. It is the endorsement by PFC is in process. Simultaneously, the standard for non-wood forest products is in the process. Also, the standard for ecotourism, safe boards, uh, safe boards might be of interest to many industries who are participating here because of the formaldehyde emissions and we are trying to bring out Indian standards to, for export of plywood and other composite materials manufactured in India. And also, we are also developing carbon registry in India which is in progress. As you know, might know that PFC is the world leading forest certification system which was founded in 1999. What is a lot of disturbance noise? Could you just... You? Just a minute. I'm sorry, the housemate is in <laughs> doing the work. And uh, as you know, PFC is a global not for profit non governmental organization, and it is, in fact, an alliance of national forest certification systems. It is not one system, but a combination of lot of systems developed around the world. And the entire process is voluntary promoting sustainable forest management through independent third party certification systems. The PFC coverage, the, the map shows the countries where PFC is present. It is around 47 uh, national systems have been endorsed so far by PFC. And there are 53 member countries. Some are developing national standards. Uh, over total all uh, overall uh, in the country in the world around 325 million hectares of close to 500 million hectares forests are aligned are certified by pfc and the total share is about 75 percent of the total certified forest with around 20000 more than 20000 pfc certified companies and more than 7 lakh forest owners there are large number of small owners who have joined together in groups for certification purposes the, the, as you know that uh, there are two main uh, global forest certification schemes. One is the program for endorsement of forest certification that is PFC and another is the Forest Stewardship Council. And there are a number of, uh, on the left hand side there are a number of systems which has been endorsed uh, to in total 47. And PFC works on an ISO based certification model where there are independent certification schemes, national schemes developed by the countries which are endorsed by PFC. Then there are national accreditation bodies in various countries which are accredited by IEF and these national accreditation bodies in turn accredit independent certification bodies which do the actual certification works. This is a small comparison between uh, PFC and FC because normally people tend to ask that what is the difference between PFC and FSC. Now both PFC started in 1999. FS, FSC started in 1993. Both these schemes have the same overall goal and provide equivalent assurance for sustainability but have different approaches. In PFC, principal criteria and indicators which form the basis of certification independent audit by the certain bodies are developed through a multi-stakeholder consultations based on benchmark standard by global guidelines under ISO 
in the in the case of pfc however there are universal principles and criteria which are applicable throughout the world indicators under fsc are of course developed in various various countries now because of this uh, development process the pfc standards have national socio cultural context factored in the process whereas in fsc the principle and criteria have universal applicability as such the pfc has basically a bottom up approach where the indicators criteria are developed from from pub, by public consultations whereas in fsc it is a top down approach because the principles and criteria are fixed the accreditation in the case of pfc done by international accreditation forum which will align with iso which as i told earlier which certifies which accredits the national accreditation bodies who in turn accredit the certification bodies whereas in the case of fsc the accreditation is by assurance services international which few years ago was an extended arm of fsc in pfc the stakeholder representation is based on united nations agenda 21 which takes care of key stakeholder in the related sector whereas in fsc there are three chamber system the social environmental and economic and as, as you may see that although the both the schemes have overall same goal the approaches are slightly different uh, i leave it to you to find out which you find better globally what is happening nowadays is that all the globally the firms are becoming certification scheme neutral that means whether it is pfc fsc they are preferring both some firms are also adopting dual forest certification because of the market demand and uh, the EU, eu strategy on promoting sfm says that consider fsc and pfc certification equally suitable for the purpose in fact uh, technically both are at par and both are equally applicable and equally acceptable around the globe these are some of the brands where pfc certified materials have found place in their procurement policies now the certification system uh, what does it do actually it provide an assurance from sustainable manner source to the consumers the consumers they are once they are getting certified material they have an assurance that the material they are using comes from a sustainably managed source and this is done in two parts one is the certification of forest that means the area where the timber is produced that is either forest or tree outside forest and then it is followed by the chain of custody certification where after the timber leaves from the forest wherever it goes in the process the all stages are controlled as a result the ultimate uh, retailer also gets an assurance that the material they are using or selling is coming from a sustainably managed source what happens here is that in the forestry operations when the forest area is certified it it, it is based on the it based on enhancing or maintaining the ecological social and cultural economic values for the healthy forest system the the forest system is taken care of the local communities rights are taken care of self the safe working environment for the workers and the local communities are ensured and similarly the worker right and safety are taken care of so in the process the on the health aspect of the ecosystem the communities the working environment and the workers right everything is taken care of as per the laws of the land and the international organizations in the chain of custody assures that the the legality the product is 100% legal it comes from a legal source the origin can be traced back to wherever at at very stage with the, the one can know the origin that where from the timber which was used in manufacturing the particular product came from and that it was from a well managed source similarly the traceability the, the coc ensures the traceability of the material right to the site where it, the material the tree was harvested now what is pushing the certification the question is it is a voluntary market driven approach what is pushing certification forward is the legislation the public procurement policies the private commitment climate change related commitment finance and of course consumers above all the the best uh, uh, way to put it that what is putting certification is the environmentally conscious consumers are the most important because they are the buyer and they if they demand if they are conscious enough they demand that the material they use should come from environmentally conscious environmentally sustainably managed resources 
Another factor which contributes is the brand image of the manufacturers. The, the brand itself says that yes, they are making the things in an environmentally responsible manner. And other is the sustainable and growing market share which is a result of certification. Then many uh, countries, the, the procurement policies includes that the materials to be used should come from a certified sources. And the PFC is recognized in, in many countries in their procurement policies. In some countries, there are laws which require that the material should come from a sustainably managed source like EU timber regulation in Europe, US Lake Lacey Act and Australian uh, Illegal Timber Prohibition Law Act in Australia. There was a survey some time back as to, to find out that what uh, gives the conf con uh, what gives confidence to the consumer that they are using a, a good material. The question was asked that when purchasing a product or a service, which of the following criteria assures you the most that environmental considerations and su sustainable developments have been taken into account in producing that product? Now, you will be surprised to know that 54% of the respondents show that, opine that the certification gives them the maximum trust or maximum assurance, followed by country of origin where it was, where the material originated, the brand value, the recommendations of the family and friend who have used the product earlier, and a, about 16% told that even media, TV, press, newspaper publication is good enough for them. But the, the main point is that more than half of the respondents were in favor of certification. Now, this is, this is a graph which shows that what are the drivers for businesses to source responsibly. You see whatever is green is the positive side of the result of certification that is the risk management, brand reputation, stakeholder management, customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction and supply chain stability all are on the positive if you are measuring, if you are taking materials from a sustainable source. Of course, there are some red like operations and supply chain costs because the certification comes at a cost, it is not free. Once you go for certification, a very small cost is there and it may uh, have some, make some dent in the revenue. But overall, if you see in the overall scenario, the certification has very good impact on the whole production system. Now, what are the benefits for businesses? And the advantage of PFC certification are listed here. One is that the PFC level allows your company to demonstrate, as I said earlier, that it shows that you are being environmentally and socially responsible to the customer. You showcase it to the customers. The procurement policies by the government and companies are therefore increasingly uh, factoring in that the material should come from a certification certified source. It also secures your supply of sustainable source material because you know what is what material is supplied and there is a restriction on the annual allowable cut. That means you know that you are sure of the continuous annual supply of the timber. And there is a larger quantity of material certified to PFC than any other forest certification system providing you the competitive options. Also the PFC level allows consumers and the customer alike to value your company's engagement towards sustainability to say that you are environmentally conscious production company. It provides you an access to increasing on market demand. And of course, it contributes towards the sustainable millennium, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. The, what is the potential of certified timber in India is quite huge. Our demand, our you know, consumption of wood is around 65 million meter cube. That is the figure in 2017. Out of that, 5% was only made from the forest because large amount of forests in India are now being managed for ecosystem services, not for production of timber. And uh, a bulk of the supply is coming from trees outside forest, which is also benefiting the farmers or the tree growers who are planting trees in their farmlands and with other vacant lands. And 20% of the requirement are made from imports. The, the potential industries the, who, can, who should adopt certification are re-engineered wood, that means the plywood, particle board and block board, things like that, construction sector, furniture, handicraft sector, paper manufacturing, 
packaging. Unfortunately, most of these sectors in India are in a disorganized market sector. They are not except paper. So in the, what is required is that the value chain needs to be strengthened for, to ensure availability of logistic timber in logistics and supply. The Indian furniture industry, I have just taken an example of one industry sector which is growing at a rate of 3.5% cumulative uh, average growth rate is 3.5%. This is from a recent study done by a high level plan set up by the Niti Aayog in the India. The timber is importing, furniture imports is worth about US dollars 602 million, but exports are also around 807 million dollars. Out of the total furniture sector, about 65 percent, 65 percent of the total is the wooden furniture sector. And the average annual growth rate of wooden furniture currently for last five years is around 12 percent. So there is a good potential for our furniture manufacturer friends to look for certification, look for certified materials for promoting their business. And as of now, the furniture clusters in India are, because they are largely in a disorganized sector, are operating at 25 to 30 percent capacity because of the constraints of raw material. Once the area, once the timber supply comes from certified sources, the continuous supply can be taken care of. These are some examples of the construction sector around uh, various parts of the world which are using PFC certified material. This is an example of a five-story hotel which is uh, recently opened in Austria which is using totally made of PFC certified timber. These are few more examples of construction in, in different parts of the world which is using certified timber. Now in the whole process, uh, everyone has a role to play because it is right from the forestry operations in the forest area, the plantations, agroforestry, farmers, then the, the wood waste industry sector that means the wooden suppliers, the manufacturers, showrooms, government organizations, then in the supply side, in the marketing side, the distributors, retailers, consumers, everybody has a role to play in being environmentally conscious and promoting sustainable forest management. Here, because we have got large uh, quantity of timber coming from imports and uh, I, I am very happy situation to know that the timber coming from British Columbia is by default certified by PFC. So we have, we are in an advantageous position that the raw material coming from uh, British Columbia is already certified. If you get it from the certification documents, then in addition that if you get the chain of custody certification, then you have a market advantage in branding the, your products and also in meeting the requirements of the importing countries because many countries by law require that the material should come from a sustainable source. So those of the manufacturers who are present in this workshop and are using timber from Canada, I'll urge them to get the material with the certified documents and go in for COC certification which will be to their market advantage gradually. <clears throat> These are the steps for the chain of custody certification. The process is starts from the, if you are interested in COC certification, you start from contacting the NCCF, the PSC national, PFC national office to and select a PFC recognized certification body which will undertake the audit. And along with the certification body, you prepare an audit plan, this is step number three, and learn from them about what type of documentation is required to take the certification ahead. Uh, once that is done, that means you are ready for the audit. You organize along with the certification body, will arrange for an audit of a, with the body. And once the audit is complete, and they take the decision to award the certification, you can sign in uh, the trademark logo used to get the access to the PFC levels and that is the process. Once the certification is given, that certificate has to be done annually. The annual surveillance audit is also to be done. The NCCF role in the facilitation chain of custody is uh, under, uh, comes under SDG goal 16, 17, that is partnership for the goals. Our goal here is being 
environmentally conscious consumer and environmentally conscious producers in that in, the, in that respect nccf is organizing number of workshop with different stakeholders across the country it it can also it is also facilitating chain of certification system following the pfc system we are bringing out promotional brochures to to showcase that how the chain of custody and forest action help all of us being environmentally more conscious and we are also operating on policy advocacy with government and government organizations so that the use of certified material becomes a part of public procurement policy uh, i like uh, allow me to run a short video which shows about the traceability this is a pfc video on traceability help protect forests and prove it your customers, public and private organizations, increasingly request forest products from the state. If you can uh, allow us, you need to prove the origin. It's important for consumers too. According to a recent survey, 70% of consumers think that companies should use PEFC certification to demonstrate that the wood they are using originates from legal and sustainable sources. PEFC forest certification demonstrates that forests are sustainably managed. But there are many steps of processing before a product reaches consumers. How can you be sure that your product is from a PEFC certified forest? The answer is PEFC chain of custody certification, our control mechanism for the supply chain. It tracks certified products from forests to consumers. Companies identify and follow certified materials through their processing and all transactions are recorded. Independent auditors verify compliance annually. Available for all companies buying and selling forest products, our chain of custody certification provides your business with a range of benefits. Meet private and public sector procurement requirements. Demonstrate your compliance with timber legislation. Use the PEFC label, trusted by millions of consumers and organizations around the world. And because we are global, with the largest area of certified forest, you can source PEFC certified materials wherever you are. Help protect forests and prove it with PEFC. Get certified and join our ever-expanding global network. Thank you very much. And I think the there is the, the email and website addresses are there for those of you who are interested, can approach, can go through the website for more details. And if you have any queries, some of them uh, may come to you later on. The email address is there. You can shoot out your queries at that address. Thank you. Now I'll hand over back to Nirmalaji for further. Thank you, Mr. Bansal, uh, for, very, uh, for a very informative and well-documented presentation. Uh, if you could just, uh, yeah. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Mr. Peter Bradfield, Technical Advisor, FII, along with uh, Ritesh and Jimmy to join as panelists. Uh, and from the NCCF team, I would like to invite uh, Varun and Taruna. Uh, so basically, we have been receiving a lot of questions in our Q&A panel, and we just wanted the audience to address this to the uh, respective uh, panelists. So my colleagues, Ritesh and Jimmy, will be doing this role. And uh, yeah, please proceed, Jimmy and Ritesh. Yeah. Thank you, Nirmala. Thank you, audience, for your uh, very active participation in this program. Uh, we have grouped similar questions together to make the answering process easy and quick. Now, the first question is going to Peter Bradfield. Uh, Peter, the question is, uh, how do I get certified wood from Canada? Where can I purchase uh, the wood in India? Uh, and also, whatever wood available from Canada in the market in India, are they all certified? These questions are uh, together. Thanks, Jimmy. Just can you just repeat the first part of the question? Yeah, the first question is how do I get certified wood from Canada? Okay, okay. So um, first of all, uh, all of the uh, wood coming from Canada to India is sawn lumber, uh, and all of the lumber coming from British Columbia to India is PEFC certified. So you can rest assured that all of it is certified when you order it. Um, and there's documentation to support that from the various suppliers. Uh, in terms of uh, obtaining wood in India, um, there are approximately 35 uh, wood stockists across the country who are holding Canadian species in their inventory. Uh, we can certainly um, let you know um, 
their names and locations, which all appear on our website as well. Uh, so the wood is available in India, in all species, in various grades and sizes. Uh, uh, but if you're a larger manufacturer or builder that's interested in sourcing directly from Canada, we can also introduce you to uh, suppliers so that you can import directly. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. It's a good uh, explanation. Next question is for Mr. Bansal. So he is asking why first certification is required and is this adding any value to the domestic manufacturers? Uh, it, I think it is a night question. The, the main question is why, uh, mm. why one should certify. As I told in my presentation, the certification is a means of telling the world or the consumers that you are environmentally conscious, which considering the current climate change scenarios, all of us, including the wood waste industries, have to be conscious about the fact that unless we take care of our environment, it is not good for all of us. Therefore, certification is a means of being environmentally conscious to, to showcase. And in addition to that, because of the constant supply and other things, you also will build up a brand value for your products. So which will add to your business economically. Thank you. Thank you, Arunji. The next question going to Peter again. Uh, Peter, which are the Canadian species good for interior as well as exterior furniture and also for door frame? Okay, yeah. Um, so we have a lot of experience now in India uh, with our species in these applications. Um, the beauty about our Canadian species is that we have five unique species, all of which can be used for multiple applications for such as furniture, doors, door jams, windows. Um, if you ask specifically uh, what do we recommend or suggest for exterior furniture that's exposed to the weather, exposed to the sun, exposed to the uh, rain, uh, then we, we uh, virtually always would suggest uh, Western Red Cedar. Um, I can also suggest Yellow Cedar. Um, both of these species are naturally durable uh, against termites, against uh, mold, fungus and decay. So um, highly resistant and therefore most suitable for outdoor use. In terms of door jams, uh, doors, um, if it's an external door, we again would suggest yellow cedar because of durability. Uh, if it's an internal door jam or internal door, uh, then you can use any of our species internally. Um, most often we suggest Western hemlock, but you can certainly use any of the species that we promote. Thank you, Peter. Uh, next question is for Mr. Bunsal. So he is asking uh, more about the role of NCCF, its presence and its activity, and how it is different from PEFC and FSC. Uh, as I said, uh, because NCCF is basically a, a, a member of the PEFC Alliance in India. So whatever work is required to be done uh, concerning the PFC section system is administered in India by NCCF. And we have already brought out a standard for forest management and we are adopting the PFC standard for COC for our valued customers. In addition to the, the certification uh, standards, we are also working for policy advocacy with the government where we are working out with the government to bring in the certified material to be used as a part of public procurement policy and also to facilitate exports lot of efforts are going into with the, the so our collaboration with the ministry of commerce ministry of environment forest and other ministries to promote use of sustainably managed wood which is coming from sustainable sources and uh, the we are in industries are one of our key stakeholders in the process we have organized workshop with the industry uh, Barun, would you like to add something to in response to the question uh, so only that uh, we are not different from PFC because we are doing whatever uh, like carrying forward their work in India and apart from that we are an independent organization are uh, like free to expand and work in India with Indian stakeholders so uh, we are doing that part as well and on FSC, uh, FSC and PFC are global schemes so we are, do not 
want to uh, say dis- do anything to fsc they have their own market they have their own system so we acknowledge them that they are in the market we are also in the market so we have to stay with them they have to stay with us so that's it they are the options that are available in the market and everyone is free to choose whatever they want to added to this one is small fact that depending upon the market requirement many firms are choosing to go in for dual certification for forest area they are using the fsc certification also and the pfc certification also when the when some of them are selecting the same certification body to do the audit according to two schemes which works out economics economically for the bodies as well as the documentation requirement more or less is similar so some companies are adopting that policy as well thank you okay thank you arunji uh, the next question uh, is to peter peter uh, what are the specialties of canadian wood which which uh, make them unique oh good question so um we find uh, that um, most of the softwoods that are being imported in india um no matter where they come from from usa from australia from new zealand from russia from scandinavia from europe um very heavy emphasis to a pine species uh some spruce but mostly pine species now pine species um um nothing nothing uh, wrong with pine species but they particularly come uh, as a uh, one or two limited grades primarily used for structural use um primarily knotty uh really not available with any any joinery grade such as clear grades or shop grades from which you can make uh you know joinery um grade furniture or doors or so on so um most other countries sending wood to india are limited to pine the beauty about our canadian species we have five distinct species only one of which contains pine and it's actually a mix of spruce pine and fir um unlike the pine from other countries uh, these trees are uh, usually a minimum of 100 years old at harvest so very fine grain uh lighter in color smaller knot structure uh very attractive so not not so coarse looking or yellowish as pine from other regions um and then of course we have four other species douglas fir western hemlock western red cedar yellow cedar um i've already mentioned that the, the cedar species as well as being very beautiful and very fine grain and easy to work are naturally durable so they can be used inside and outside in all kind of conditions um western hemlock and douglas fir are both renowned all over the world in export markets uh for joinery for furniture for door jams for doors windows those kinds of things so Uh, again these are very fine grain old growth species that canada offers not plantation fast rotation species you know where you get a lot of very less rings and uh, very coarse grain and larger knots so very different our species are very different more sophisticated more variety and certainly joinery grades that the pines uh, do not offer so um I'm restricting all those comments to softwoods. Now there are hardwoods coming uh from uh Africa and South America and uh, Asia, you know, teak and marantes and uh rosewoods and other species coming to India. That's a different situation. Uh but they're becoming more and more limited. Thank you Peter. Again the next question is for Mr. Bansal. So he wants to know what is the strategy of NCCF in India to assure the availability of certified indian species along with the foreign species okay yeah. now i think um, uh, what nccf is doing apart from the advocacy we are working with the state forest departments to to go in for certifying their forest areas which is uh, little, little slow but is taking place already in up about 4 lakh hectare of government forests have been certified using nccf pfc standards which includes indian species like acacia and mango which are used by our industries also for the handicraft sector now now since the more and more timber is likely or is coming from the trees outside forest the nccf has also brought out a standard for tree outside forest which is which is ready for launch and once uh, the the industries who are sourcing material from different pockets in the country 
which are from the trees outside forest, they take this certification along with the PFC, uh, COC, they will be able to meet the requirement of certified materials, Indian species, which are available for the industries for various purposes, for domestic market, as well as for exports. So, the, so our policy advocacy and stakeholder engagement is one of the strong areas of working of NCCF for which we are continuously working along with the state forest departments as well as with the industries and other stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, Arunji. The next question uh, going to Peter again. Um, how timber as a structural member is uh, comparable to uh, concrete or steel or you know similar other manufactured materials? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a question from an architect. Good question. Good question. So, um, well, of course, uh, environmentally friendly, I think that's the first thing that comes to mind. Timber is a renewable resource coming from renewable, renewable, sustainable forest. So uh, timber is absorbing carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen, uh, all of the points that Nirmala talked about, meaning that uh, timber is, is um, environmentally friendly to use, much more so than minerals um, uh, that we take out of the ground or manufacture using a lot of energy and water. Co uh, products like steel and concrete and glass require a lot of inputs and generate a lot of uh, carbon dioxide. So, and, and they're not renewable necessarily. So this is the big advantage of wood. In structural use, wood is lightweight. Strength to weight ratio is superior to steel and concrete. Um, it performs much better in uh, seismic locations. It's easier to transport, it's easier to work with. It can be prefabricated. Um, the, the speed of building a project is probably one tenth the time of a, a concrete project in India, maybe even more. So there's huge savings in terms of the speed of construction. Um, there's a much less uh, intrusive footprint, uses you know, less disturbance in the ground, less concrete, uh, less work required for foundations and footings. So there's a cost advantage. I mean, I can go on. You know, and there's a lot of anecdotal evidence in terms of timber structures around, um, you know, uh, the satisfaction of being in a timber building, you know, the, the, the ambience of the building and the health aspects of working in a timber building. All of these are, are positives. And, and of course, the timber retains all the carbon dioxide absorbed in the wood for a lifetime and can then be recycled. Yeah. You know, so again, um, storing the carbon dioxide. So, so many advantages over steel and concrete. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Again, next question is for Mr. Bansal. He wants to take the chain of custody for the PFC. So he wants to understand how he can go for the certification, how long it will take, and is there any prerequisite for that? Okay. Now, uh, the, the, as I said in my presentation, the first point is if you are interested in chain of custody certification, you can go to our website where minimal requirements you can see and there's a list of cert notified certification bodies which is available. You can contact any of them for, uh, for uh, giving a, a priori study as to what is the requirement of documentation for chain of custody, what type of document you would require to show. And once that is ready, you can also ask the certification body or you can contact a number of them to negotiate with the cost of certification, which varies from uh, depending upon the complexity of your production system. That means how many items you are producing, where from you are sourcing, depending on all that. And it is, uh, it can be done. Now, once you are ready with the documentation, it, it may take about a week to 15 days to get the chain of custody certification, depending upon, as I said earlier, that if you are ready with the documentation, it, it, it really is a matter of few days that the certification body plans for a visit in consultation with you, sends the auditor who goes through the documentation and sees the processing system. And uh, they, the auditor or a group of auditor, uh, depending upon the requirement, will take about uh, five to six days or maximum one week to prepare the audit. After that, audit report, after that the certification body will take a decision based on the recommendations of the audit. So it is safe if you start now it, and if you are uh, well documented, otherwise not going through the requirement of certification, otherwise you are maintaining documents, 
uh, from day one to day end, it uh, the time period may be around a month or so. Thank you. Thank you, Arunji. Uh, the question is uh, from uh, a trader. The what is the minimum lifespan of uh, Canadian wood for various uh, applications in India? Peter, we know that uh, India has got a ver variety of climate. You know, when it is very hot in Delhi or North India, it might be different in other parts of the country. So, um, uh, another part of this question is: uh, Do they need any special treatment to withstand the climate in India? So, yeah, good things. question. Um, I do uh, recall that uh, in Nirmala's presentation, she showed some nice examples of, you know. Uh, projects in, in Canada, for instance, uh, and then a similar project in India. But there's no question we can use our species um, for furniture, doors, door jams, windows, and in structural use. And I think the question's more about exposed structural use um, in India. But uh, like all things, you know, it, it's important to pay attention to detail. So when you're, when you're planning a building in India in a harsh climate, it's really important to take care of the detail. So um, architects uh, are very important here in terms of the detailing. You know, where if we're going to use wood on an external wall, let's not use it in the afternoon sun on the west wall. Let's use it on the east wall, the north wall, the south wall. If we can protect the side of the building by having large overhangs or in a shaded area or by screening, let's do that. If we can do a combination of wood and stone or other materials, uh, just because of the harsh UV or harsh moisture um, at, at a certain location, let's do that. So it doesn't have to be 100% wood. We can use a mix of wood and other materials. Um, and where we use, do use wood, then we do, we try and do uh, prefabrication. We try and do pre-coating in the factory using a really good quality coating system, which penetrates the wood and protects the wood from UV, harmful UV rays and also protects it from moisture. Uh, we, we build in um, systems in our, in our structure so that if the moisture gets past the wood, that there's a backup there so that the wood can drain and dry away from the building system. So there's all sorts of methods that we use uh, that allow us to use wood in very harsh climates, and we do use in very harsh climates. I know India's got many uh, harsh micro uh, climates um, from Lanavala to Kerala to Rajasthan to the Himachal. But uh, we have similar climate areas, um, including termites, you know, in North America and Australia and Hawaii, in China and Japan. Um, humid, hot, uh, termite infested areas, very similar to India. All of those areas, uh, we use wood, um, widely use wood in, in, in structural use. Yeah. We should just have one last question from Mr. Bansal here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mr. Bansal. So this next question is about PFC certification. He is asking, is this PFC certification is acceptable in Indian green projects? And if it is, uh, how much points they can expect from this certification? Lead points. Good question. I think um, uh, the, the PFC certified material uh, is acceptable in the green projects. And on the scoring sheet, whenever you are using the certified material, you get full score. And if you are not using the certified material, the score is zero. So the short answer is yes, the PFC certified uh, material, COC certified material, if is used in a building project, it is scores 100% on the particular score. Okay. It is perfectly legal to use that material and it will be duly recognized. Barun, am I, do you want to add something? No, sir, that's fine. That's correct. That's the right, uh, that's the right answer. Thanks to uh, both Arun and Varun. Uh, I think our time is up uh, and uh, whatever questions remaining, we will answer to your questions uh, through email and uh, I hand over to Nirmala, please. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bansal and Varun, for, um, especially for collaborating with Canadian Wood to host this webinar on sustainability and certified wood. Um, and also thank you to the attendees for taking time out to register and uh, attend the webinar today. Um, wishing everyone happy Diwali in advance. Uh, have a safe Diwali. And with this, we end the webinar. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ritesh. Thank you, Jimmy. And yeah. Pranesh, uh, I think. <laughs> thank you, Pranesh. Yeah, okay.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all the participants. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. <laughs> <laughs> After some time. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.